So hello everyone. I'm happy to oh uh, share the screen. I'm just setting up the screen. So hello everyone. I'm very pleased to be here today, and I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and giving this talk about the reduced Google Metrics analysis of Wikipedia networks. So I'm not used to this format of presentation, and I'm sorry not to be with you today. Um, this is a last-minute uh, problem that doesn't yeah that. Uh, avoided me to come. So um, today, the work I'm going to present uh, has been made in collaboration with Summer and Zand, Dima Shepelianski and Klaus Fram. Um, this is uh, most of the results I'm going to present come from the PhD of Samer. And uh, I think you already had a very nice introduction this morning of Klaus about uh, fundamentals of Google Metrics and of mostly of the, I guess, of the reduced Google Metrics analysis. So, uh, this talk will mostly focus on how to leverage. You don't see my slides? Oh, sorry. Let me try anyway. So, let's try again. I'm sorry. Share a screen. Share partage. Does that work better now? Cool. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, most of the talk will discuss on how to use uh, Google Matrix tools to to extract some really macroscopic and interesting information from the Wikipedia uh, encyclopedia. So, as you all know, Wikipedia is a very large, free, collaborative reading encyclopedia. You, it's, it's now very interesting and we have a lot of very uh, good information in it. And uh, what is really interesting for us is that it, it relies on a hyperlinked structures for all articles. All articles are linked together with hyperlinks. And so, for instance, the web page of France directly points to the web page of Western Europe, which might as well point to the web page of England or to an, any other web page. So, we are going to leverage this hyperlink structure and build a so called directed network where, where the vertices are the, are the articles of Wikipedia, each article has a topic and a name and the edges that interconnect these links, uh, are the, the edges that interconnect these vertices are called, uh, are given by the hyperlinks. So Wikipedia can thus be directly mapped to a directed network of topics that has a shape which is scale-free. Um, here we will concentrate over, on a couple of Wikipedia editions. You all know, I think, that uh, Wikipedia has been written in various language editions. So you have English version, which is the most commonly used and which has the largest set of contributors worldwide. And as you can see, the, the English version, the English edition of 2017 has over 5 million nodes and 122 million links. So this is getting a very large network. You have other uh, editions that are pretty interesting and more or less large depending on the set of contributors. So you have the French edition, the German edition, the Arabic editions, and we have looked at all of these and how we could extract some meaningful information from these editions. Um, okay, so one, of course, uh, like we are today uh, in this uh, very nice conference, we will leverage the Google Matrix analysis of this uh, large uh, direct network of Wikipedia. So for these Wikipedia networks, we can build a Google Matrix. As you all know, this Google Matrix is, represents a mark of transitions uh, of a random surfer that will go with probability of, let's say, half a, alpha percent of the time, use the hyperlink structure to, to travel on this hyperlink network. And uh, with one minus alpha proportion of time, we'll go randomly as well. So from this Google Matrix, it is, of course, well known that you can use the the eigenvectors corresponding to the largest eigenvalue, which is called the page rank probability vector, to capture uh, interesting nodes. These interesting nodes are called central nodes in Wikipedia. And uh, several studies in the past have really looked at how Wikipedia can be understood using page rank metrics and Google metrics analysis. So a couple of works uh, exist. Um, some very interesting ones are the ones where you have, where the researchers have extracted the ranking of historical figures or over 35 centuries. And uh, another one, which, which is in good agreement with the, hard, uh, with the hard ranking. 
and another one where the ranking of world universities has been captured uh, and which is a really in good agreement as well with the Shanghai academic ranking. So of course here we only look at the hyperlink structure and uh, extract the ranking only for the subset of nodes which look at either universities of historical figures. Uh, you can as well look at uh, Wikipedia by, by creating the, a reverted, an inverted uh, mat network, directed network, where you do a transport version of the adjacency matrix, and therefore, and then you can compute on this uh, the largest eigenvalue that we will call the chi rank in this, in this thing. In, the, in this case, uh, you will extract uh, good diffusion nodes and the nodes which are good for diffusion capabilities. So, in terms of a small page rank example, I'm going to start introducing the various studies we have done. And uh, one of the studies really looked at uh, geopolitics interactions among countries, either worldwide or either at the scale of Europe. So, uh, here on the map is plotted different colors. Uh, we have colored various countries, which are the top 40 countries uh, when looking at the page rank index for uh, the English version of Wikipedia. Here, the first, the largest, uh, the most important country in English Wikipedia is the United States, then the second is ranked uh, is France, then you have uh, the UK, then you have Germany, Canada, etc. So we have grouped all these uh, countries into sets that, sh that are represented by the colors. So you have the English-speaking countries, which are in orange. You have the former USSR block in blue. You have in red Europe. You have Arabic countries in the top 40, which are in yellow. And you have Southeast, uh, Southeast in pink. And in purple, you have Chinese block. And of course, you have uh, Latin America in green. So here you can have a good ranking of all these countries with the page rank. But of course, as you may already know, the page rank uh, index and the page rank probabilities really depend on the language editions of Wikipedia. There is some cultural bias here, and the page rank index varies depending on the English or Russian or Arabic edition you are looking at. For instance, in the top uh, table, you will see that, as uh, given before, for the English Wikipedia, you, United States are, is ranked first, while uh, for the Russian edition, it is, of course, Russia. So, um, in order to find some cross-edition ranking, we have built a TITA score, or, and previous authors have, wor have worked on this as well, and to offer a global ranking across several editions of Wikipedia. So this global ranking is uh, looking at the top 100 uh, nodes in one edition E of Wikipedia, and we are capturing this uh, sum of 101 minus this rank, to, and we sum that over all editions. This gives us a ranking measure which offers uh, where the largest values give us the most important node across all editions. Um, we can as well, of course, compute an average uh, page rank probability and build from that a different ranking. But from our experience, uh, it was much more interesting to have this theta ranking than this k average rank that is pictured here for a set of 40 pages. So in, in this slide I show you, we have uh, selected as well another subset of nodes in Wikipedia for our research. And we have uh, calculated uh, a set of the theta score for all the painters that are enlisted in the English Wikipedia. And we have created the theta score over those seven editions of Wikipedia. And we have picked the 40 most important ones uh, according to this theta score. So you will see in this list of 40 painters, very famous painters such as Vinci, Picasso, Van Gogh, Rembrandt, Rubens, and others. Um, I have shown you the two sets, the set of 40 countries, the set of 40 painters we have extracted, which this extracted versions of 40 painters is more related to the seven editions that we are looking at. And uh, based on these subsets, we will try to find a better representation of the interactions among all these painters, all these countries, and how they interact together using the theory which is called reduced Google Matrix. So why? So Klaus, I think, has 
on a, has already introduced the Reduce Google Matrix theoretical foundation. Uh, the idea is to use this powerful tool to create a sub-network sub vision, like a thematic view of the full Google Matrix for a set uh, for a set of articles on Wikipedia. For instance, I'm interested in painting, and I want to know what is the what are what are the from all those 40 very important painters, how in, how do they influence each other? This is a question I can ask myself, and how they are related maybe to world countries uh, like the 40 to the 40 top countries I've identified before. So is everything clear uh, or did I miss? I don't see the audience, so it's difficult for me to have any feedback. Yeah, we, we are hearing you perfectly. Okay, thank you. So um, the little red uh, circles here represent simply the a subset of articles that I'm looking at. And then from that, we are building what uh, Klaus has introduced you earlier, which is the reduced Google matrix. So this reduced Google matrix, I'm just going to quickly go over it again. So we consider here reduced networks of NN nodes. Those NN nodes are the ones that we are, which is the, which we are focusing on. So for instance, those 40 painters or those 40 world countries. And uh, we, in, we, and we investigate the construction of a reduced matrix, Google matrix. And therefore we have to reorder the regular matrix, the regular Google matrix G. Well, we will uh, put on the top left corner all the all the elements of the inner time inner uh, matrix GRR. On the lower right hand side, we will put the NS times NS uh, elements that represent the scattering matrix. This scattering matrix is the matrix that represents all the other nodes of the network, which are not the NN nodes of interest. And then we have on top right and top left corner, the different probabilities which made us go from, which, which help us travel from the reduced set to the scattering set and back from scattering set to the reduced set. And accordingly, we will rank, we will, from G, we of course can compute P, which is the page rank uh, uh, probability vector. And that will reorder the same way to have on the top the NR first uh, probabilities related to the NR nodes of the reduced network. And on the bottom, we will have the NS nodes uh, of the rest of nodes. And from that, since we we want that to calculate a new reduced Google matrix, GR, such as, of course, the use of GR on uh, produces the same steady state uh, uh, page rank, PR. And from that, uh, and from the definition of G and the reordering that we've made before, we can define GR as being the sum of GRR plus GRS time 1 minus GSS to the power minus one times GSR. Close uh, told you, I think, that NS is, of course, too large for a direct evaluation of one minus GSS to the power minus one. And because we are just looking at a few, as a really small subset in our nodes. So he has proposed uh, the following numerical evaluation uh, by saying that it is possible to invert one minus GSS, assuming, of course, that GSS is not singular by saying that we can extract lambda c, which is the leading eigenvalue of GSS, using a power iteration. And uh, from that, extract as well pc, the projector, onto the eigenspace of lambda c, and its complementary projector qc. And from that, it is possible to compute uh, those two parts of uh, the inversion. So the first part, the left part, pc over 1 minus lambda c, represents the projector component. And on the right-hand side, you have the complementary projector component. Uh, so when you when you evaluate uh, when you integrate this derivation into the definition of the reduced Google matrix, you can see that GR is simply a sum of three components. The first component is still GRR. The second is the projector component, which is the the multiplication of PT over over one minus lambda c times uh, GRS and GSR. So this is a part which is a lot related to the page rank vector, as you will see. And you have GQR, which represents the inter indirect interactions through the rest of nodes 
and where you have no impact of the largest eigenvalue of GSS. Um, now we'll illustrate uh, this components of GR. And the first illustration I'm going to give you is to show you what is the reduced matrix we get for the set of uh, for a for a set of uh, 27 European countries selected in Wikipedia. So here uh, we have selected the 27 European countries that were composing Europe uh, for the 2013 Wikipedia edition, and we have selected them and looked at what is GR if we. And in the Wikipedia network of the English edition. So on the left hand side, I plot uh, the I've plot the reduced matrix GR, and the right hand side, the projector component GPR. As you can see, both matrices are really dominated by the pro by the um, by the projector component, and among uh, almost ninety five to ninety seven percent of the total column sum of GR is. Uh, given by this projector component GPR. So this uh, GPR, as you, as I, I didn't tell you, but on the left hand side, uh, the, all the rows are ordered by increasing page rank index. So the most, uh, the the largest probability page rank probability is on the top for France, Great Britain, Germany, Italy, and this order, and in the bottom as well on the x-axis uh, for all the columns are ordered in the same with the same ranking. So you can see that this um, representation is really that the projector component is doesn't give us any really new information compared to the regular page rank uh, probability vector, uh, and all the interesting information for us is captured mostly in those um, three to five percent of the total column sum, which is given by GRR and GQR. So, if you look a little bit at those matrices, the sum of all weights of these matrices for this 27 EU network, um, and for as well the 40 top worldwide set of countries, so the set of countries I've given you before, which is worldwide, you can really see that um, the, the projected component offers a big chunk of the, of the, of the power of this matrix, if you sum all elements uh, in the matrix and you normalize by the number of columns. And uh, only a small part is, uh, is captured by WRR and WQR, which correspond to the sum for all the for GRR and GQR respectively. So now what can we see in GRR and GQR for this 27 EU country network? Um, here we have innovative information, I think really only in most of the innovative information is in the right hand side figure and is in GQR. So GQR here, we didn't picture the di diagonal terms because they are pretty important and this uh, this blurs a little bit the, um, the, the color scale. So as well, like before the color scale, red values are the maximum values and blue colors are the minimum values. On the left hand side, you see the direct links that are represented by GRR, which is a direct view of uh, the regular Google matrix. And with this regular view of the Google matrix, you cannot, since it's column normalized, compare what happens in between columns. However, but on the, uh, on the right hand side for GQR, you can compare what happens with the different, uh, you can compare column-wise, what happens for one line. Um, GQR represents, I want to say again, the scattering of, um, represents all the path that you the compose, represents in the Markov chain, the contribution of the random walks that go through the scattering matrix. And so it represents not the direct interactions between the node of our network, but the indirect interactions that where all the, the possible travels that go through the scattering matrix and go back to the node of interest. So in order to understand this a little bit better, um, what you can, what I can say is that, for instance, if I'm interested in the, in, in a strong, if I want to see a strong interaction that is indirect and that does not really exist in 
in the direct links on the left hand side, I could capture what happens here for the this red uh, point. This red point means that the when I am on Finland, I have a high chance to use the scattering matrix and an indirect link to to go to Sweden. So there is a strong interaction between uh, Finland and Sweden. Uh, this is not as well captured with the direct interaction between Finland, which is here, and Sweden, which is here. It is not among the largest ones in the full matrix left, but it's more visible on the right-hand side. Here as well, you have a very strong interaction bet between Belgium and Luxembourg, which is totally meaningful, and as well between France and Luxembourg. And you have as well a strong interaction between uh, Sweden and Denmark, and another between Sweden and um, and EE. Okay, so there's innovative information in this in both matrices, and mostly on the right hand side and on the one on the right hand side. And to better uh, this is of course this um, indirect links that you can see with the right hand side here, as capture as well the cultural views of different language editions. For instance, if you calculate, if you compute a GQR for the English version of Wikipedia, and on the right hand side you captured for the same 27 EU countries, you cap you build the matrix GQR and D for the French Wikipedia. You see that the the indirect this, the indirect links are not exactly the same and don't have the same uh, magnitude. You still find a strong influence between Finland and Sweden. And so the question we are asking ourselves is, is there a fundamental difference between those indirect networks um, for different language editions? Or are there some common traits that represent like some common knowledge that is true in different editions of Wikipedia? So to, to investigate that, we have created what we call networks of friends. So the network of friends is what? We say that a top friend of a country J uh, is obtained by ranking all the countries in column J by descending value of column J in the matrix of interest. And we pick the top four friends, for instance, to build a little directed network as represented on the right hand side of this slide. So on the left hand side, we have pictured GR for the English Wikipedia, and I've created, <clears throat> I've ranked, I've selected, uh, I've selected five countries in Europe, which are Sweden, France, Great Britain, Spain, and Poland. These five countries are identified as the most influential ones in terms of page rank uh, for the set of countries that have entered Europe at the same time. So for the founders, we have France, uh, then you had uh, the, the Great Britain joining, then you had a set of countries joining Europe with Spain and another set with Sweden, etc. So for these five important countries, pictures with the largest circles, we have selected, uh, we have looked into GR for the top four friends uh, in uh, GR, as uh, defined before. And we can see that Sweden's top four friends are represent. No, France's top four friends are given by Spain, are given by Great Britain, by uh, Germany and uh, Poland. No, not Poland. And uh, this network is really, really, um, let's say, represented, is really dominated by the countries which have a high page rank. This is completely true since GR is dominated by the page rank description and the top country, the top friends of a country J are likely to be the top page rank countries in the set of 24, 27 EU countries. Now, when you build the same type of network of friends from GQR and D, you see much more diversity because you have extracted this uh, important eigenvector and uh, you only see the contribution of the rest of the of the network and it is interesting to see that by group that um, by building the same top four friends for English Wikipedia or for French Wikipedia for this 20 for by selecting the same 
set of important countries. So we have selected as well Spain, France, Great Britain, Poland, and Sweden. And we have built exactly this network the same way than before. Uh, we see with the black arrows that they capture first important nodes that are not necessarily the ones that are, are, have a high page rank in general. This is because GQR and D has no page rank contribution in there. Uh, these plots have been plotted with an automatic uh, tool from Jeffy with an algorithm which is called force direct layout, which defines where the nodes are and groups together the nodes which are more highly interconnected. What I didn't tell you yet is that the red arrows represent um, the, the edges that have been computed as the top four friends of the friends of those important nodes. And we have added these recursive friendship edges in, until no new, no, new, no new vertices is added to the, to the network. It means that uh, red interactions are friends of friends interactions, and uh, black edges are direct friendship interactions from the, with the origin being one of those important countries. So you see what is interesting is that even if you are looking at two different um, editions, you can still see that there is a clear um, community that is represented by, in, that you can find in both types of editions. You can see that France is uh, most of the time related to Benelux countries and Neverland. You can see that the red, um, the red uh, countries are in Poland as well as are most the same, etc. So, and you always see that Portugal and Spain are grouped together. So this is an, there is some, uh, let's say, common knowledge that you can find in both, um, in both editions. And this is true for other editions as well. I'm not going to give you other different uh, examples. So a little bit to highlight those cross-edition friendships we have counted. Uh, how often in all the five editions we have, for five editions we have investigated, which are English, French, Russian, German, and Arabic. We have counted the, um, the friendship interactions that exist uh, in all five editions, or in four editions out of five, or in three editions out of five. Uh, there is always a, a, a friendship relation between France and Belgium, or between France and Spain. There is always, as well, a friendship relation between Great Britain and Ireland, or between Poland and Czech Republic. And you can read the rest of these results in this table. So there is some really common knowledge in this structures of networks. So I will show you as well another type of network of painters, since I've introduced painters before. So what we have done here, we have looked at, we have selected 30 painters to create a reduced network. For these 30 papers, we have selected six that belong to different painting movements. So we've looked at Cubism, Fauvism, Impressionism, Great Masters, and Modern painting. Uh, we have associated a color code and we have picked uh, these 30 painters with a theta, with a theta score uh, ranking. And we have identified for each category the most important uh, page rank painter, which is Picasso for Cubism, Matisse for Fauvism, Monet for Impressionists, and Da Vinci for Great Masters, and Dali for Modern. From that, we have created as well the network of painters and we have created a, the network of top four uh, friends, or top three friends. We have created the top three friends. And the red, the, similarly, the black arrows represent the top four friends of the leading painters of each category. And the red arrows represent the friends of friends uh, interactions that can, obtained, can be obtained recursively until no new... Uh, no new, ed no new vertices added to the graph. So what is interesting to see, on the left-hand side, we have English Wikipedia. On the right-hand side, we have the French Wikipedia. And we can clearly see that the chronological development of these painting movements is really coherent. On the top, you have in orange the great masters, which come from, uh, the, from just say, the late Middle Age, uh, Renaissance century. And uh, 
they from this the set of orange great masters is densely interconnected with da vinci being influencing influencing Degas and other leading painters of the impressionist movement impressionist movement painters as well very densely interconnected and they as well um, really uh, influence and the blue the blue group which is fauvists and then you have a nice intrication between fauvism modern and cubism painters which of course are more closely interrelated and you can see the same type of developments on the right hand side for the french wikipedia so it is nice to see that two different cultures that have built the same type of knowledge of course there are some local differences but the big uh, the macroscopic view is really interesting to see then we have looked at building a friendship network uh, that looks at the interactions between painters and countries of course to do that we have built a subnet of uh, a reduced network which take which accounts for both the 40 set of painters and the set of 40 countries and we have extracted the top three country friends for uh, each uh, for each of the 40 painters we have identified before and to do that we have not used only gqr alone we have made this use the sum of grr and gqr so we have, we have summed direct interactions within grr and the contribution of the indirect path and this we've done it for english wikipedia the black arrows represent interaction where um, where the where the local where the direct interaction is more important than the indirect interaction, while the red ones represent the opposite. So you can see that France and Italy are really, really, really central, uh, central in this network, and that a lot of those painters are related to art development in France, Italy, or Spain. Uh, we have built the same network for the French Wikipedia as well. In the French Wikipedia, you see as well a central position of French, Spain, and Italy, but Netherlands seems to be more central than it was in the previous one. So these are interesting views as well. <clears throat> so now, uh, if, is there any question in the audience related to this part? Because I'm going to move to another part. Other questions? No, you can move on. Okay, I can move on. So the next part is mostly related now. Now that I have identified my subset of nodes, my network, I'm able to, to picture it and to capture the, di the direct and indirect interactions. I would like to know how does, um, how, I would like to know how does a relative link variation will impact the reduced network structure? What happens if an interaction grows stronger in the network? And what are the nodes that are going to suffer from it? And what are the interactions that will develop based on this change? So we have developed a sensitivity analysis on this reduced network and on the reduced Google matrix. Uh, from that, what we do, we look at what happens if there is a local change on a given relationship. For instance, I take the relationship between the nation J going to nation I in the reduced network. This one, this time I look, really look at GR. And I will modify uh, with a slight variation the, the element of GR at location IJ. And I will norm, renormalize again the column J to keep uh, uh, good properties uh, for this uh, new, the new changed matrix. And I will calculate the modified page rank value with this GR. And then I will observe the change of importance of nodes in the network by calculating uh, the logarithmic der derivative of the page rank probability for a given node K. It can be node I, it can be node J, it can be a node K. But here we mostly look at, at node K, which is not necessarily the link that we have changed. So this measures for us, this is what we call the sensitivity of a nation K to the link variation J to I. So looking at that, we can I have various examples of, uh, of results that we have found by having this, uh, this type of uh, analysis. So for the 27 European countries data set, and uh, for the, for we have looked at what 
is the impact of uh, an increase of the of the interaction between Italy to France. So we have changed the link from Italy to France, and we look at what happens for the other 25 countries in terms of ranking and what is the average sensitivity variation that we observe for three different Wikipedia editions. So here we took the value of D and we have averaged it over the of the three editions for EN, English, French, and German Wikipedia. So what we can see is that for this, uh, for this analysis, that the country which is the mostly affected by this increase of the cooperation between Italy and France is Slovenia. Uh, it is true that Slovenia has a lot of uh, economic exchanges with Italy, and uh, if Italy increases its its and yeah, if Italy increases its uh, relationship to France, it is most probably Slovenia that will um, uh, see its its uh, cooperation with Italy decrease, and thus will not be able to will uh, will lose in terms of importance uh, in this global ranking in the network. Uh, the same, I the, the second uh, country which seems to suffer the most is uh, Greece which has as well a cooperation uh, with Italy in terms of uh, economic or history or geography. Uh, okay. Now we have looked as well at the set of 40 worldwide countries and we have looked at the impact of an increase of relationship between China and the United States. And uh, we have mapped on, on, on this figure the, the change of uh, the sensitivity that all the other countries will um, observe if this change happens. So here the lower values are in red and the larger values are in green and median values are in blue. So the countries which would be mostly affected by an increase of collaboration of flows going from China to US would be uh, some would be, of course, the border countries, which have more exchanges with the, with China, like India, like Japan, like Southeast Asia, or like Russia. And the ones that would benefit the more are the ones that are located close to the United States, because they are, of course, cooperating with the United States more often. Uh, what we can as well observe with this type of, um, with this type of analysis, the sensitivity analysis, is that it's possible to, to identify countries, clusters of countries that really function together. So here we have, we have um, captured the fact, of course it is well known, that Sweden, Denmark and Finland uh, work together. And on the top line we have looked at the, the average sensitivity for a link modif modification going from any of these Nordic countries to France or to Germany. Uh, on the top, it is going to France, and on the bottom, plots D and E, it's going to, to Germany. Uh, no, it's the opposite. A, B, and C is going to Germany, and D and E is going to France. So you see that every time one of these countries increases its relationships to an important uh, European countries, the other ones will suffer because they will reduce their, their cooperation with uh, this country that is a bit leaving this uh, cluster of uh, countries. Um, then we have looked as well as the average sensitivity of countries to painters. So here we have calculated what would be the sensitivity of country of the 40 countries if you increase the relationships from Van Gogh to the Netherlands. So you all know that Van Gogh is, original, is originally coming from the Netherlands and um, that he has spent only the four last years of his life in France. But it was very productive years, and this is where he really uh, got didn't get famous, of course, at that time. But most of his master masterpieces were drawn there. And if you would um, artificially increase the interaction between Van Gogh and the Netherlands in this reduced network, you would clearly see that it's France that would suffer from this increase of interaction because it is highly tied to Van Gogh as well in Wikipedia. Uh, 
Okay, and this is when you increase the sensitivity. Sorry, there is a little um, there's a little typo here. It's the sensitivity from Van Gogh going to France. Um, uh, I don't think this is the right picture. I'm sorry. That is not the right picture. This is, I think, the sensitivity. The, the caption is wrong. This is Da Vinci to friends. This is Da Vinci to friends. You you can find all these updated pictures, um, figures in a paper that I've cited uh, at the end of the talk. But here is the increase of interaction from Da Vinci to friends. So, in, of course, you will see that Italy is the, the is the country that will suffer from this change. So here we have looked at uh, like. Um, unidirectional sensitivity and it is possible of course to look at what happens uh, when the link is changed from i to j and is modified as well from j to i so we have simply calculated a uh, bidirectional sensitivity which we call the two-way sensitivity to measure the sensibility of a nation i to the changes in both directions on the link i to j and link j to i and we have observed that for, um, for instance, uh, the relationship between pages and countries. So here, on this plot, I've re we have represented uh, the diagonal sensitivity of top 20 countries of top 20 painters. So on the left-hand side, we have the top 20 painters uh, of, of the 40 top category I presented earlier. And on the bottom, we have the 20 most important countries uh, that we have identified worldwide. And here, how can you read that? Is um, that we have calculated the two-way sensitivity for the top 20 countries on the bottom when the interaction between this country and the painter on the left-hand side is modified. So how to interpret that is the following, is to say, for instance, that um, France is mostly impacted by, as well, Vinci, if there is a link between Vinci and France that is being changed. Uh, the same way uh, for Spain, you have Picasso that is really important as well in terms of leading painting figure. And Michelangelo is as well pretty important for most of uh, the countries that are presented here. So this helps us capture very easily in a synthetic way, really the, the importance of some specific painters uh, in different cultures and, and in different for different countries. Another different uh, little analysis which follows from this uh, two-way sensitivity is what we call the relationship imbalance between two nations. Here we would like to know um, on the relationship between two countries A and B, which one is the strongest nation? Uh, which one has the more influence on the other one when it is um, when when there is a link change uh, in both directions between both countries? Uh, this relationship imbalance is calculated in the following way: it is the difference between the two-way sensitivity for link for country A uh, observed at country A minus the two-way sensitivity calculated as well um, between for a variation, two-way variation between A and B and observed at point B, observed at nation B. And this relationship imbalance can be interpreted in the following way. If uh, this F between countries A and B is positive, it's B that is the strongest nation and is going to lead. And if F, A, B is negative, A is the strongest nation. And we have plotted these outcomes uh, here for the, um, for the case of the 27 EU network, what we can see in terms of relationship imbalance analysis. So it is, of course, um, uh, we have only presented half of it because it's a perfectly symmetric matrix. Uh, X-axis represents country A, Y-axis represents country B. Uh, the the blue values represent negative values, reddish, orangish values represent positive values. So here we can see that France is really a country which is dominating uh, in the, in this, uh, this is English Wikipedia, in the English Wikipedia, the French is really dominated all other countries in the sensitivity analysis. Uh, and Germany is another really important one. Austria and Italy is an important one as well, and Austria a little less. Um, we have done the same type of development for uh, the, 
for the worldwide network. And here you can see that US is really the strong and so strong that the variation of other countries' influence on each other is pretty much damned by, uh, by this. So you have US, which is important in English Wikipedia, French, which has a strong impact, and German. So um, this concludes a little bit my talk. So um, here, what I wanted to show you is how Google Metrics can be nicely uh, leveraged to analyze Wikipedia. It really offers a nice framework to automatically learn really uh, gross-grained embedded information and like having a macroscopic view of some elements which are really interesting. Most of the results I've shown you are results that are, of course, pretty obvious. We, we wanted to check whether the type of information that we could obtain was meaningful and reasonable. So what is nice to do with Google Matrix Analysis is that you can, of course, capture important nodes which page rank or derivative matrix across editions. But you can as well exhibit interactions within a subnetwork, like in this thematic view of, uh, of this uh, directed Google Matrix network with the Redux Google Matrix analysis. And what is interesting as well is to understand the influence of links and nodes on the network with the sensitivity analysis, which was in the last part of the talk. In terms of perspectives, uh, Google Matrix has very nice properties to become, for me, a major tool for artificial intelligence and automatic information extraction for such large, from such large and very large information networks. But therefore, for me, I think we still have to be able to automatically extract the subset of articles, the subset of nodes that we want to to investigate further. So an automatic procedure that could be able to extract the subset of articles that for a given study and create this subnetwork would be really interesting to go beyond and have an, an artificial intelligence leverage more efficiently this network. And as well, um, you may have seen Wikipedia is changing every year. You are adding a lot of new articles, new links, etc., and how to capture this variation into the, um, into the reduced network at a reduced cost, that would be pretty interesting, and trying to understand what are the parts which really are important in this evolution or not. So most of the works I've presented here are, are, are to be found in this uh, recent literature, so if you need some further explanations, more developments, don't hesitate to go and look for these papers. The two first are, are free, uh, free access. I'm free for your questions. Okay, I try to go back to not sharing my screen, one second. <laughs> I have, a, I have two questions, if yes. nobody else from the audience is... Um, can, can you please go back to the slides up where you show the indirect interaction between countries? Indirect Yes, direct interactions between countries. Is the, the Finland and Sweden... Um. Can you see my slides now? Because I, sh I stopped the sharing. Okay, this is what I'm thinking. I can't find, uh, I'm sorry, I have some technical matter. I can't find that. This was here. Ah, oh, I can find it here again. I couldn't see. Yes, I do it uh, right away. Here you go. You should. Uh, okay. We are not seeing that. Don't see it? Okay. No. Oh, no, yeah. So, in the previous slide, in the previous slide, yes, uh, yeah. yes, so, uh, pro probably one back again, so when, you, when you notice that Finland and Sweden have this strong uh, indirect relation, I, I noticed that Finland and Sweden is here. And here you have one that is strong in terms of the column. Even in the previous one. Yes. I, I noticed that most red nodes 
are red uh, elements are above the diagonal. Probably because of the way you sorted rows and columns. Do you have an interpretation for this? Um, about the way we sorted rows and columns? Countries are sorted by importance, right? Yeah. Yes, by importance, I agree. So, uh, do you have an interpretation of why Finland has a indirect relation to Sweden but not the other way around? Um, it means that you, uh, yeah, my interpretation is the following, is that you have uh, an important, um, um, an important number of paths linking Sweden and Finland indirectly, uh, and you have a reduced number of direct paths compared to the all possible paths that are going out of, uh, of, um, of Finland, or Sweden, which one was that? You, you, I mean that here you have a lot of subjects, you know, which are in integrated in Wikipedia. You can have two articles that are uh, interconnected, related to issues related to politics, related to agriculture, related to movie, to theaters, and a lot of different things. And these are most these are cultural uh, strengths that are mostly captured by indirect links. While direct links are the ones where you have a direct link on the page of Sweden going to Finland. So the fact of having a culture which is closely intertwined uh, for the two countries, I think, increases the rate of indirect links that go through this scattering matrix. Yeah, my, my, my observation was more that the indirect links tend to be more important from less important countries to more important yeah. countries than the other way around because the red dots are more above the diagonal than below and a sort of related question is about sensitivity when you measure the sensitivity of adding a link uh, from italy to france i think yes where is it oh there no before before yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, why are all the numbers negative? You mean that the only... There, no, there is one that is positive, it's France, you see, and it's capturing most of the values. Well, France must be positive, because when you add a link to a node, because that node increases its score. Yeah. But you mean that all the other ones are negative, yeah. or...? But this is an average value as well, over three editions. But most of them are negative, this is true. Yeah, okay. Do you have, you have an interpretation for this? It's like that the only country that gets more important is France. Yes, because it's the one that you are pushing, the, the, the that you increase the probability and then you renormalize those, so it makes sense that the other ones are negative because you have to compensate for this increase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. This normalization, normalization step that you can see here. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, would it make sense to have relative values? Because we often see that um, small countries are, set, are underrepresented, and it would maybe make sense to have uh, um, um, a relation between the population and the, the, the uh, quantity of links. You mean normalization by yeah. by number of inhabitants? Yep. Yeah. Did you get this? No, I didn't hear it, sorry. So, uh, someone was commenting that it may make sense to normalize the values by, num by population, because the countries have different sizes, yes, true. so it may make sense to have a normalized... Did you try this? No, no. So, I think it's a good suggestion. More questions? No. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. Thank you.